Welcome to the Manifesting Doll Podcast. I'm Barbara Orban from No Diet Babe. I'm a spiritual mindset coach and weight loss expert. If you are a spiritual babe wanting to up-level your life around your body, health, wellness, spirituality, law of attraction and manifestation, then this is the podcast for you. I'm here to give you the tools, teachings, and strategies to manifest the body and life of your dreams. As spiritual babes, we know to focus on love as opposed to fear. So get ready to learn how to implement spiritual teachings to weight loss, wellness, and your daily life coming from a place of love and abundance. This is a celebration of how we can shift our inner perception of ourselves and watch our outer selves shift you can become the best version of yourself and I'm here to help. So let's get started. Hey babes, welcome to today's episode. I'm super excited to have you here today. Um, So today I wanted to talk about strategy. So I wanted to talk about when you're trying to manifest weight loss, um, do you need strategy? Because I think this, I feel like among the manifestation community, um, this is a highly, highly discussed topic that I see as to, you know, the balancing of the two, the mindset and the strategy. And from my perspective, because I'm always you know, I'm a weight loss expert. I'm always able to refer back to um, what I've learned from a weight loss perspective. Um, I can always refer back to that. But like I've said before, the principles for everything are the same. It's just when we're faced with having to learn how to apply manifestation to different areas of life, we often have to improve the relationship we have with different areas of that part of life. So what I mean is like, if you have to um, like lose weight, you're likely having to have to improve your relationship to dieting and relationship to your weight. You have to improve the relationship to your food, et cetera. And then if it's about money, you have to improve your relationship to money or um, like relationships, the way you relate to relationships, etc. So there's always going to be the the little sections in between, um, like the little, what am I trying to say? Like every single topic has its own different ways that you need to apply the principles, right? But the principles are always the same. And from, you know, through my studies now with the law of attraction and different laws of the universe, there is the law of action. And I can, I can really account for this with weight loss is that there is the law of action. You are going to have to take action, but whether or not strategy is required is still a big question mark. Why is this? Because it's rare that something will work for everyone. It is pretty much rare that one strategy will work for 100% of people. Um, yes, okay, like if we're going to talk about real basic weight loss science, like you have to be in a calorie deficient. Yeah, okay, so we know this, right? You, you have to understand that though, because I'm going to get into um, what what a calorie deficient actually means probably another day. Um, but today, what I'm trying to say is that yes, people need strategy, but there are going to be some people who can lose weight without strategy. And it just depends on the individual. For example, there are some people who can lose weight purely based on changing their mindset because they just change their relationship with food. They start listening to their body a little bit better. They start um, maybe um, having smaller portions and they just literally, or they're just getting busy and they start living their life with more passion and they start living their life not focusing on the food and then they end up losing weight that way. 
like for example some some women just they just lose weight just without really understanding how they've lost the weight or this stuff happens i'm not saying that it's the majority of people i'm just saying that some for some people i there there are some people that just can lose weight and not have to have some sort of strategy in place and then there's other people who like start weighing their food and start counting macros and that's how they're losing weight and then there's others who just follow some kind of an online meal plan uh, that's been already calculated for them and that's how they're losing weight or they want to cut out carbohydrates and that's how they're going to lose weight like there's not just one strategy and it's not just that one strategy is better than the other it depends on the individual why is that it depends on the relationship that person has to the strategy and how they perceive the strategy do they perceive the strategy to be easy or hard because if a strategy is perceived as really hard and difficult to do that person is not going to be able to carry that out or be motivated to carry that strategy out. And so that's why in majority of the manifestation community, they say, you know, that you have to move towards what is fun, <laughs> right? And that that's why is because fun is, is associated with easy, but it's actually just a perceptual change that we can make to any strategy to try and view it as easier and this this can like it can get more complicated but I have counted macros in the past and stuff like that and I changed my perception of it to make it seem easier to not over complicate it and that's the thing with different strategies is that you've got to find a strategy that you're able to look at it with ease because I think the biggest problem with weight loss and probably everything is is when overwhelm kicks in um, and then the overwhelm rolls over into like fear and doubt about whether or not it's working so for example like you get overwhelmed with your weight loss journey you start getting cravings you start like you go outside the rules of what you're meant to be doing and then that leads to overwhelm which then leads to fear of the worst and just from a mindset perspective that's usually when things start going downhill and so with strategy like I said, there's not just one strategy for weight loss. Yes, the science, we can break it down and look at it from that perspective and go, well, everybody needs to be in a calorie deficient. But it's also, if you say to somebody that you need to eat less, that in itself can cause, because I know for me, if somebody told me just to eat less, completely unaware to what was going on my insides were having a major stress reaction as to the thought of eating less because I already felt super deprived from my dieting mindset and I was constantly sabotaging that because of my relationship to that idea of having to eat less or having to be in a calorie deficient to lose weight and so for me like personal trainers telling me that over and over again or somebody putting me on a macros plan where I was in a calorie deficient just wasn't working for me at that time before I switched I, I changed my relationship to strategies I changed my relationship to how I felt about food and my dieting mindset so that's why when it comes to strategy and versus mindset it's it's such a highly debated thing and and you've got like I see it in uh, business coaches because you've got I guess manifestation is so prevalent in amongst the business community and so you've got these people saying you know you need equal parts of strategy and manifestation and then you've got the spiritual teachers who are teaching that it's just you know you have to focus on your mindset and then ma magic and miracles happen and mind you like I actually don't know of any spiritual teachers who don't who do like no nobody's saying that you don't need to take action i just don't think that 
anyone is really saying that you don't need to take action like you do need to take action that's part of life like we have to take action otherwise we'd just be sitting on a couch all day long like what would we be doing if we didn't take any action right so like law of action is is required but it's interesting because like i follow um gala darling and today on one of her stories she had this great image and it's two circles and you know how you have two circles that overlap and then you've got like the part in the middle so she's got two circles and one is a circle of discipline and the other is a circle of surrender and then in the middle as these two circles overlap in the middle you've got flow and like I said every time I see stuff it just reminds me of the weight loss stuff because I'm always so focused on wanting to serve you guys like with the best weight loss information and it's that image like if you can picture a circle of discipline and a circle of surrender and in the middle is flow that's like the perfect image for your relationship to food and how your relationship to food needs to be because i feel like with the circle of discipline a lot of people are outside the circle of flow when it comes to being so strict with dieting and then you've got the other part where all of a sudden people go oh i i'm allowed to be an intuitive eater or i'm just going to eat whatever i want and not care and that's kind of like too much in the surrender circle um where you're just eating whatever you want and you think that um manifesting weight loss is just going to be magical and you won't have to do anything because you're visualizing you know And then there's that part in the middle where you're just in flow and you've got that discipline, you've got the surrender, you're listening to your body, you're connecting with yourself, you're appreciating and and, um, you're practicing mindfulness around eating. You have a strategy that feels easy. You feel confident that it's working. Um, You're managing your emotions around food and the dieting and watching out for, you know, your mind predicting the worst, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, that's really the place where you want to be, and that's the thing is that people are so focused on like they're all or nothing, and then they go from one area to the next. They're going from being completely surrendered, like I don't care what I'm eating, I'm eating all the food, which is generally where um, emotional eating is, because emotional eating, your Emotional eating is more common than you think because emotional eating, we we often just picture somebody crying and eating out of a tub of ice cream because they've broken up with their boyfriend or whatever. But emotional eating is so much more subtle than that. Emotional eating is so, so subtle that everybody does it. And that's where a lot of people need to realize that because um, emotional eating needs to be pretty much assessed by every single person that wishes to lose weight because there's always going to be emotional factors in everything that we do why because emotion leads to action like the interconnection between action and emotions is it's it's science it's psychology it's just the way we are thoughts and emotions influence our behaviors and vice versa it's that's just how we are designed that's how the world works so you you have to if you want to lose weight you have to start looking at your emotions and you have to start having awareness of what's going on why are you sabotaging yourself what is your relationship to food etc etc so yeah yeah because like what i generally see is um when women want to lose weight Um, they get really excited about it they're really motivated in the beginning generally because they they get to a point where they're not happy with their body they get a thought or they try on some clothing and they're they don't feel comfortable 
um, or, you know, they've put on weight. Maybe you've like, you're just feeling a little bit uncomfortable within yourself. Maybe you don't feel like you're at your best self. Maybe you just um, have gotten some bad habits around food and you've been indulging a bit too much. So then you go through this motivation phase where you're all excited and you're like, I'm going to do something about it, right? And then you go through this phase and then you have this idea in your head of what you need to do to lose the weight. And usually when we have this idea in our head of what we need to do, the strategy that we need to do, usually this strategy, we become very perfectionist about it. And we want to be perfect because we think I'm going to be perfect and then I'll lose the weight. I'm going to be perfect with my eating. I'm going to be perfect with my um, meal planning on exercise or whatever. And then maybe even you start documenting it. You, you like think to yourself, okay, I'm going to go to the gym on this day and then I'm going to eat this meal for breakfast, this meal for lunch, this meal for dinner and you go grocery shopping and you start planning it all out and you're really, really motivated, right? But a lot of women, they're just relying on this surface motivation and we call it discipline and we call this surface motivation discipline and and that we have enough willpower to stick to these surface things. And then we say, you know, it'll take 21 days to form the new habit, blah, blah, blah. And that's fine. Like, I'm not saying that you can't make uh, habit shifts through that way if you're using repetition, but there will be fundamental thought patterns that these people haven't identified and shifted. And these thought patterns are the reason why they keep on self-sabotaging. So then the moment that something goes wrong on the diet or um, the biggest thing that goes wrong on diets is that, that you're going to go through periods where you need a refeed. And a lot of people f- take a refeed as an indication of failure. Whereas a refeed, meaning when you lose a little bit of weight and you get extremely hungry and you lose control around food and you gain a few, like a little bit back, people see that as a sign of failure. Whereas that's just a normal response to weight loss. Um, weight loss isn't linear. You don't just keep on losing weight. You fluctuate. You lose a little bit, you gain a little bit. You lose a little bit, you gain a little bit. Like whenever I've gone about a weight loss strategy that like when I went about my weight loss for the last time when I never ever had to do it again, I gave myself breaks and I understood that refeed periods weren't required and like necessary and normal and that my weight would fluctuate back up again. Um, And I think this is the part where like you have to be in alignment, meaning when shit hits the fan, you still bring yourself back and go, hey, this is all right. I'm on the right track. Like you're constantly giving yourself that coaching, that motivation to say this is normal. Like I'm not a fat pig because I just binge ate and I'm not going to gain it all back because that's typically where our thoughts take us. And then instead of just like popping, you know, you pop one tire and then you've just got one tire on the car to fix. It's like, you're just smashing the whole car. Like it's like, Oh, I got a crack in my screen on my phone. Let me just smash the whole phone. That's kind of the equivalent of what we tend to do with our dieting. It's like, Oh my God, I just had pizza for dinner. I may as well binge eat now on everything because I'm just going to start my diet tomorrow because I've, I've just ruined it for today. And that's the kind of attitude that keeps us from actually getting to where we want to be, these self-sabotaging things. And so that's, I guess, that's my perspective of the manifestation and the strategy because you need to have that mindset. You need to understand that there's fundamental rules around weight loss that you can't avoid. Like you can't avoid the fact that your weight's going to fluctuate. You can't expect your weight to be completely linear. It's going to go up and down. These are normal things that are okay and you have to become comfortable and and respect your body and that's just how the body functions rather than 
because what generally people do is they come back to that identity that I have no self-control, I have no willpower. And then, because I used to do this, right? And then we look at other people and put them on a pedestal and think, I'm just not like her. I'm just not disciplined enough. I'm just not blah, blah, blah. And then we view these people who are able to keep themselves healthy and fit and not fluctuating weight or not, you know, have trouble losing weight. We view them as different to us and that they must have something that we don't, that we're missing something. And that's where we sabotage ourselves as well because every single person has the potential to build the skills that they need to achieve what they want. And so, and, and, and I'm no like... I'm not excluded from this. Like my brain has those same self-limiting thought patterns um, that I used to have with my weight that I used to think I'm just, I just, um, um, I'm an emotional eater or that I have poor control around food or, you know, that I used to just think that somebody else just had it all together and I didn't. And this kind of stuff can come up with other things. So it's completely normal for you to have these thoughts, right? But just know that you can overcome them. It's not necessarily easy, but when you do, then weight loss becomes easy. And that's really where you've got to have that mindset shift. You've got to have that that um, mindset shift where the strategy then becomes easier to handle. Um, and... I mean, I'm really good with strategy for weight loss because I understand nutrition very much. And so for me, because I piece together all the different schools of knowledge, so I've got like knowledge in eating psychology, I've got knowledge in like personal training and nutrition. I like was really into the the bodybuilding community and learned a lot about that kind of stuff. And, you know, like I learned how these people prepare for their competitions and everything like that. And I worked with, you know, coaches that trained other people who wanted to do fitness modeling because I wanted to do fitness modeling myself. And so I learned all about how they did all of that stuff. Like I learned how they lose the weight, how they prepare themselves. And generally what I see is people go, right, I'm going to go on a 12-week plan for weight loss and their focus is how quickly they're going to lose the weight and the strategy that they use is completely aimed to disconnect from their body and ignore anything like any signs of hunger and go, no, 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 I've got to stick to my plan whereas there has to be, your strategy has to, I believe, if unless like we're not majority of people are not preparing to step up on a stage and I mean even people who are stepping up on a stage generally I wouldn't recommend that they give themselves a three-month timeline like in terms of a preparation for um, a fitness modeling comp like typically you would want to set out and just get yourself to a, a nice maintainable weight and then like extend your preparation because You don't want to put your body through um, extreme dieting because extreme dieting generally leads to rebound weight gain from my experience. Every single time I was in a rush to lose the weight, I would be going full force, I'd be killing it, I'd lose 20 pounds and then I'd gain it right back like nine months later or something. Um, And that was where that's where a lot of women go wrong as well because they go on these shakes, they go on these um, diets where they cut out food groups, etc., etc., and they're going into these really large calorie deficits even without realizing because a lot of people market diets as being healthy but they're actually just putting women in a really large calorie deficit. Um, yeah, so that's where I think a lot of things go wrong because you've got to work with your body. You've got to respect that you, you shouldn't have to push yourself. Like you should be able to find that place where you're not eating emotionally or not, not 
like giving in to everything, but you're also allowing yourself to have certain foods so that because you start allowing yourself to have certain foods, psychologically, they become less alluring. Therefore, you're less like, likely to binge on them. So when the time comes that you do you know, go out to dinner or whatever, which is inevitable. Like you're never not going to eat pizza again, or you're never not going to touch chocolate. You know, when that point comes and you've lost the weight, mentally you're in a space where this food isn't going to release a whole heap of dopamine because that's generally what happens. People deprive themselves a lot. Then they get a taste of something pleasurable and the dopamine just, just kicks in in the brain and it just sabotages everything so you have to like dull that response to the food you can't have that response to the food be so heightened and it's not about the certain foods being like a drug or sugar being like a drug no it's your relationship to the food that determines whether or not you get that high euphoric feeling when you eat something Um, you can control that Um, And it's all just psychology. And that's why eating psychology is so important to people who have struggled with their weight for so long. Um, You have to understand the link between emotions and behavior in order to understand how you can change. Like you, you don't have to like struggle. You don't have to feel like you don't have any self-control or that you've tried every single diet, but you just are a person that's too lazy or lacking willpower like it's not true especially for the women who do set out and learn so much about nutrition and still can't you know I know so many women and I've coached women that they themselves teach nutrition or they themselves are in the fitness industry yet they cannot control themselves around food and they they get really embarrassed because they're meant to be um, you know, a role model. And it's because they haven't addressed the behavioral links that can only be solved through psychology and an understanding of psychology and why we have certain things, why we do what we do. So anyway, that that's kind of what I wanted to discuss about like strategies versus manifestation. Like at the end of the day, they unite and Um, as humans, we have to have strategies that seem easy for us in order to stay motivated. And it's not to say that we, like, we do need discomfort. We do need to grow and change as individuals. Um, like, you know, a lot of people say, get comfortable with being uncomfortable, which, which is true. But I think it's just like this, you have to just pay attention to your own self and, um, your inner world and how you're perceiving each each challenge and each step and each strategy that you're doing um, and taking care of the, any overwhelm. So that's my tips for today. I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode and I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you loved this episode, I'd love for you to leave me an iTunes review. Don't forget to follow this podcast for more uplifting teachings to come. For more tips, inspiration and teachings, come follow me on Instagram at No Diet Babe or check out my website, nodietbabe.com. Until I see you next time, babes, lots of love.